I'm Philip Greenberg. I'm the artistic director and conductor of the Kiev Philharmonic Orchestra in the Ukraine, a position I've held for about 19 years now. And before I became a conductor, I was a, a violin soloist and a concertmaster. I was a violin student of the famous Joseph Gingold. And uh, I miss the violin, but uh, um, I've kept a, a lifelong uh, association with the violin. And as a conductor's primary uh, uh, purpose in life is to help musicians uh, play better, uh, I've pursued my own passion in the violin uh, uh, by helping musicians uh, get the right violins also. So in that respect, I'm a businessman, but I see it more as an extension of the mission of a conductor helping people. I had the great good fortune about 10, 12 years ago of meeting uh, uh, the world-renowned uh, violin maker Peter Westerlin uh, in Cremona. Uh, every year in Cremona they have what's called Manda Musica, and it's kind of a trade fair for uh, all things related to the violin. And I remember, as if it were yesterday, uh, John Huber, uh, the great uh, uh, author and connoisseur uh, about uh, the violin, he just brought this very tall, distinguished looking gentleman uh, holding a violin case over to me and said, uh, I think you two should know each other. And uh, I was first flattered. I didn't know that John Huber even knew who I was, but he introduced me to Peter Westerlin. And John said, uh, he's one of the great violin makers of today, and uh, Philip, you should know about him. So Peter uh, had uh, an instrument with him, and he uh, took it out and uh, showed it to me. I played a few notes on it, and it just blew me away. Uh, as a former violinist myself, I had owned Stradivarius and Guadagnini's and, and most of the most famous uh, Italian violin makers. And this instrument just was uh, uh, the equal of uh, any of them and uh, the better of most of them. So stupidly, I just said on the spot, I'll buy it. And Peter just laughed and said, uh, well, this one I've, I've already made uh, for someone uh, in the U.S. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, concertmaster in Hawaii. So then I said, uh, well, can I buy the next one that you make? And, and Peter very politely said, well, I'm, I'm back ordered. And then finally I said something to the effect, well, I'll buy every instrument you can make for me uh, if you'll give me an exclusive on representing you in the US and Canada. And I'm sure Peter was very skeptical at the time, but uh, uh, thankfully uh, he gave me a chance at that. and. Uh, um, there was a time soon after that that I began uh, uh, selling more of his instruments uh, in the U.S. and Canada than he was selling in, in Sweden. Uh, so uh, uh, hopefully I've fulfilled uh, uh, my promise of, of uh, uh, getting the word out uh, in North America. He was, of course, uh, quite famous already in Europe. Um, uh, but uh, now uh, he's equally well known uh, in the U.S. and uh, I'm very humbled to say I had a small role in that. Uh, and, and I've many times told Peter that uh, when the history of Peter Westerling instruments are written, hopefully I'll be a small footnote uh, um, that uh, I helped somewhat uh, along the way. Um, as, uh, as I said, I was a performing violinist myself for many years before I became a, a conductor. And uh, I've never really, uh, even though uh, I've owned violin shops that employed many makers, um, and uh, I know all of the processes of violin making, but having no skills myself uh, with tools, um, I never really quite understood the, the difference between uh, a good maker or a great maker. Um, and when I met Peter, uh, it all started to come together for me because as a, as a conductor uh, for much of my adult life now, we deal every day with the great geniuses of the past, uh, the Beethovens and the Bachs and the, and the Mozarts. Um, but we also deal with the uh, uh, just really good composers, not the geniuses, the ones that had uh, uh, wonderful knowledge and craftsmanship, but just missing that bit of genius. Um, and I've come to understand Peter in, in those cert, uh, same terms. There are many, many excellent craftsmen around the world today that uh, 
their woodworking skills are, are incredible. Uh, the, the tools and the scientific knowledge and everything that goes into violin making uh, is, is monumentally more now than in the golden age of uh, Italian violin making. But like as a conductor, the difference I find between conducting a Mozart symphony or something by Salieri, who was a great craftsman of his time, but Mozart was a genius of his time, or a Beethoven versus uh, Clement, uh, or other good composers of the time, where Beethoven was the singular genius of, of his time. Uh, and and uh, one could go on and on and point out uh, uh, in every era of music, there were a few singular geniuses uh, that in many ways defy analysis, uh, but they were in a different league than the other very qualified craftsmen of their time. Uh, and I feel that way uh, about uh, Peter Westland's instruments. I've played uh, 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 on many, uh, uh, if not uh, all, of the, the other um, respected makers of today. Uh, and again, I can admire their craftsmanship, their talent, uh, their understanding of tools. Uh, but there are none of them that, in, in my opinion, show the, the genius of a Peter Westerlin in a way that uh, Stradivari and Guarneri showed a, a genius in their time uh, over the other excellent makers of the day. Why that is, um, I have the same problem uh, analyzing genius uh, in this respect uh, as, uh, as with composers. Um, as an uh, uh, um, educated musician with uh, two master's degrees, of course, we all studied uh, the fugues of Bach, and we studied the Sonata Allegro form of Beethoven, and any uh, well-trained, uh, well-educated musician, you know, we learned how to write a fugue in the style of Bach. We learned all of the tools of the great composers. Uh, but analyzing uh, and utilizing those tools did not make any of us into the next Bach uh, or, or the next Beethoven. So I feel very strongly that there's uh, an extent beyond which analyzing genius uh, is futile. And in my humble opinion, I think that's where uh, many, if not all of the violin makers of today have gone wrong. Um, we have, we have uh, computer analysis now of, of the column of air produced inside a violin uh, 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 when a Stradivarius is played. And we have spectrographic analysis of the varnish and the materials and, and every kind of scientific uh, analysis conceivable uh, to analyze the results of those great geniuses of the past. Um, but again, I, I think analysis of genius is great in understanding it. Uh, I think it's futile towards trying to recreate it. Uh, and and I, I think uh, uh, most, if not all, of the good violin makers of today uh, are on the wrong path in, in, in chasing uh, these, these numbers uh, uh, and, and the uh, scientific results that a few singular geniuses uh, of past generations achieved by their genius. Uh, and, you know, how much of that genius is, is instinct, how much of it is, is uh, just uh, uh, an understanding of, of the wood. Uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's uh, uh, a lot of things, but it had to be very simple um, for its time because Stradivari didn't have the computers that the makers have today to analyze what happens uh, when you set uh, a piece of wood vibrating. Uh, he, we can see his tools in Cremona, and uh, he hardly had calipers or, or, or any uh, um, things that could accurately measure uh, the results. So whatever he did uh, in applying his genius to his craft had to be very simple. Uh, uh, and genius in that simplicity. And I think in that respect, uh, uh, from what I've uh, gleaned from talking to Peter uh, over all these many years, uh, I, I think he is wise enough uh, to understand that and to put his uh, mind 
in the mind of, of uh, those, uh, great, uh, those great makers uh, in, in looking for simple answers, in, in, in listening to the wood rather than uh, having a computer analyze, what should I do with this piece of wood? Or if I've made a violin, what does the computer tell me uh, about the, the results of it? Uh, of course, uh, uh, like all genius, it has to be a, uh, a combination. Yes, uh, it, uh, it must be uh, uh, simple relative to what uh, tools the makers uh, didn't have at the time. Uh, but again, like uh, composers, uh, any trained composer of uh, Haydn and Mozart's time, they had the, the same tools. Uh, their tools were an understanding of melody and form and harmony, uh, but only a few uh, uh, used those tools uh, uh, um, uh, guided by their own genius and produced masterpieces. Uh, and the same with, uh, you know, the difference between a, uh, a Wagner and a, and a Meyerbeer. Uh, Meyerbeer was the most recognized uh, composer uh, of operas of his time uh, uh, until Wagner came along and, and now history records a good craftsman as opposed to a, a singular genius. Um, I've taken great, uh, great pride. Uh, uh, again, uh, um, it, I've been involved in, in uh, some form or other in the violin business for much of my life. But as I said, the mission for me is, is more uh, to help uh, musicians uh, uh, who actually make the music that provides me with my livelihood uh, as a conductor, uh, helping them uh, uh, to uh, um, get the, the right instruments. And I've just seen so many times, uh, there, there have been times that uh, uh, I've uh, performed with or recorded with very well-known violinists, uh, that Olinda Stradivari or a Gornary. And I've had occasion uh, to give them a Westerland to play. Uh, and they're absolutely amazed that uh, someone living in this time uh, and, and whose instruments are, are uh, in a uh, uh, comparatively affordable price range is, uh, is uh, getting the results uh, of the, the few greatest uh, makers of the past. And it's been proven uh, uh, to me time and time again. Uh, uh, I know when I met Peter, uh, I had read of a, a, a blind study, uh, the, the traditional where um, you lay out uh, instruments of famous Italian makers and then there's one or two modern ones and the audience doesn't know which is which and then the audience votes on, uh, uh, on which sound they prefer. Uh, and I've done that myself several times uh, in New York. Uh, a few years ago, I assembled uh, over $40,000 worth of instruments of, of uh, uh, the most famous uh, Italian makers of the past and threw in one Peter Westerman and uh, uh, had uh, uh, Rachel Barton, the famous violinist, play on all of, uh, all of the instruments and had the audience vote on which one uh, uh, whose sound they like the best, and Peter's won out. And I've done that several times here in New York uh, and in, in Chicago. Um, so it's just, for me, uh, uh, incredibly rewarding uh, to see, um, especially for, uh, for young players, uh, because uh, New York uh, is, is full of future violinists, uh, uh, of the concert stage, of the major orchestras, uh, etc., that can't afford a Stradivarius, uh, and to be able to uh, steer them towards a, a living maker uh, that uh, is producing the total results of a Stradivarius and a, a Guarnerius uh, is extremely rewarding for me. And the other is, uh, um, and I won't say this is, this is a shortcoming of Peter's, I greatly admire it, uh, uh, but uh, we've often discussed uh, uh, about uh, his lack of interest in marketing himself. Uh, I, I mean, he really uh, uh, puts all of his energies into his work and into his product, and for the most part uh, 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 is confident that his product will speak for itself. On the other hand, many makers uh, that I consider far inferior are marketing geniuses, uh, and they have really promoted themselves. 
Uh, their prices are astronomical on their instruments. Uh, some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Uh, I haven't found a single one whose sound excites me uh, as a violinist myself, as a, as a conductor. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's a shortcoming of Peter's or it's a, uh, uh, a virtue of Peter's. Uh, that uh, he has not done the the, uh, the promotion that some of those uh, other makers have have uh, done, uh, but I I think uh, the benefit of that is the prices are still reasonable, uh, and uh, and good talented players um, can still afford them, although the prices have been climbing uh, uh, astronomically in in just the 10, 12 years that. Uh, that we've been uh, uh, in association. Uh, but I started down that track because one of the most rewarding things is uh, uh, I, I, as a conductor, I, I tend to know most uh, musicians, especially in this country. And as I've, I've uh, interacted with members of the New York Philharmonic and members of the Philadelphia Orchestra's uh, Detroit Symphony, uh, and some of them owned um, the uh, instruments of those more expensive, better uh, promoted, self-promoted uh, makers. And I've always told them, yes, I know about that maker, but you should try a Peter Westerman because it's much better. And they're always very skeptical. And then invariably, when I put a Westerman in their hand, they end up immediately selling those other more expensive makers and buying a, a Westerlin. And this has happened with uh, people in New York Philharmonic, the Philadelphia Orchestra, Los Angeles Symphony, Detroit Symphony. Um, and it's very rewarding because, uh, uh, again, I'm no longer a, a performing violinist myself, but I'm very happy when I can um, uh, advise those that, that do still play uh, and and uh, their skepticism is, is immediately uh, abated when they finally get a chance to play on a Peter Westerman instrument. So I started by saying uh, when the history of Peter Westerman instruments is told, uh, I would be very happy if I'm a small footnote in, in that history, uh, but uh, it's really a great honor to, to uh, play a small role in getting the word out uh, about uh, a real genius of our time.